our home from our outdoor tractor I think I'm actually gonna make this a video right afterwards because now we're going into the winter weather on the farm because we're in an extreme deep freeze right now here in the Midwest. So we just got home from Shoshone, Indiana for the Midwest Winter Nationals. Immediately stayed here at the farm. Check out my sick fit because I don't have any of my actual farm clothes here. Um, I'm in the calf barn checking on the calves right now, but the only problem that we are seeing right now besides that the calves are obviously cold, but they do have really good bedding and making sure they're all drinking and stuff, um, is our robot has decided to just not send milk to one of the pens. So I'm doing what I can do and then I'm going to have Dalton come and help me. Fix the frozen line. What happened was that the there's lines that go from the robot to the actual nipples where they drink, and so those froze and popped off. So they weren't able to get milk to the one pen. It only happened to one pen though, so that's a good thing. Not all of them. I am finding our new calves that so Dalton pushed calves up this morning, but I am finding some of the new ones that still haven't drank yet because. Especially in this cold temperature, it's really important that they know how to drink and where to get their milk to help them keep warm. So I'm just finding the ones this afternoon who haven't drank yet, pushing them up, gave grain um, because we want to make sure they have plenty to eat, made sure all the grain bins, grain tank, whatever you want to call them in here are full. Um, Avery and Dalton are bedding the older cattle right now and Greg and Mason are fixing the manure spreader. But we will... Push the calves up. I mean, as you can see, they're all pretty just laying down, chilling together. Well, this group isn't laying down. The other group over there is just hanging out, cuddling up together. Um, cattle are a lot better adapted at handling this weather than we are. So all good things here. Um, nobody seems very sick. They are shivering a little bit, but that's to be expected when the real feel is negative 20 something. The waters are pretty frozen, but they still have access to water. Avery is doing fresh bedding. So is Dalton in the back. All the heifers are huddled up over there. And you can't see, but over there they have lots and lots of food to keep their rumens warm, which is basically their like internal heating system. Obviously it like helps them digest and stuff, their ruminants, but it also puts off a lot of internal body heat, which will help keep them warm in the winter. In the cold, I wish I had a ruin to keep me warm like that. I actually am not that bad today right now, besides the fact that uh, the calves stole my gloves and I can't find them, so I'm barehanded right now. We're all done for the day, I think, all right? Here. Yeah, we haven't been home yet, and apparently there's a big drift in the back of Earth. Uh, so I'm fine too, and I guess my dad told me the drift would be up to here on me, so about half my height. <laughs> We're about to find out. But I was thinking of like telling people about how we take care of cattle and stuff during the cold and then we have to keep them well bed and well fed. That's my rhyme for you.
Okay, it is Monday the next day. Bree has been at the farm all day. I did work at home. I don't know, the boys are doing shop work today. Naturally, because it's negative. I don't even know. I'm putting my glove back on. You know, us <laughs> agriculture content creators are really doing the work out here trying to film while like not having gloves on and stuff, but I'm out here at the farm picking up Bree and then checking on the cattle and stuff it is this morning it was like negative 14 out it's like one degree right now so that is what it is here's my fit check for the day got my coveralls on three sweatshirts i don't like wearing a jacket so i just wear lots of layers and then gloves all cuddled up keeping warm everyone's quiet Got lots of food, good bedding, better than yesterday, like you saw earlier. Water, all good. This is what happens when somebody doesn't shut the trap all the way before they try and load it again. We're gonna make one of them videos, you know, when the guy in the workplace is looking at all the you're making all the faces when somebody does something dumb. This might be it. <laughs> oh shut. Sure. Alright, let your say down, buddy. It should be ripping it right off. No, it's taking it off. Huh? Taking. Taking what? Push down on your shit, man. I think it off. That's a lot of bolts in there. They come my way? Yeah, just look. Look now what? Now we're going home. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Then you better roll. I'm gonna get a, I gotta get a special rivet gun. It's called a Huck gun. I borrowed it from Tim Deppy, Deppy Transport Baraboo. That pulls some big heavy rivets in there. Uh, we don't have that. I mean, we need it once every three years, but uh, the same with him, but he's got one. The rivets we put in there are called Huck rivets. They're Huck rivets, they're a big bolt that comes out when you cut them back in the bottom. So. And you'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay? Hopefully you remember to film it so we can include it in this video. All right, you will. <laughs> we should film a lot of stuff we miss here. I know. <laughs> you should. But we'll get her. We've got to figure out how to get the door out of that frame, though, I think. And get it in the new one. Yeah. So we're getting a new door for the... Yeah, if you look over here, the frame was broke on this one. And we don't want to be driving down the road and you can weld it, but... Uh, where is it broke? Right here. You don't really want to be dropping, spilling corn. I yeah, remember. you've seen videos of corn doors coming open, going down the interstate. I don't want that to be us. Right. So We got Mason working really hard to organize his new toolbox. 
takes a lot of time to figure out where you want everything so you know what everything it all kind of matches off otherwise you're looking through everything for all of it we got lots of good handwriting on here i'm surprised you didn't steal that magnetic thing i have in my service truck that i haven't put on my doors yet they just stick in the doors and it tells you everything well now that i know it <laughs> I was going to use a label maker, but it's out of labels. You know, it don't more, work either. It doesn't work. That's why I haven't buy a new label. Okay, that mm -hmm. makes more sense. Uh, well, yeah. Bree, do you like your new toolbox? Do you love it? If yeah. Emily would stop wrecking so much stuff, we wouldn't need to buy bigger toolboxes and more tools. I don't break anything. Did you? Should we tell the story how we got this toolbox? Well, we have it. That'll be in the video before this is how we got it. Okay, so Mason and Greggy were working in the shop today, right? Mm -hmm. And then Avery has been helping Brain in with their semi because it's been gelled up and not working properly. Yeah, we had a couple things gelled up today. But we got them going. Yeah. When it's this cold, we leave our trucks home, generally. Because we hired Brandon to go do it, so he's stuck on the side of the so road. So he's the us. one gelled up, not yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> It was just 10 below, which if we had to haul corn, if we were behind on our, filling our contracts, we'd go do it, but we're not, so we're actually ahead, so mm -hmm. it's a good thing. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Calves are all doing good. Nobody's yep. too bad, so. Here we the, go. The boys will update you tomorrow, right? Mason will film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, pretty cold out still here, so I had the payloader running anyway. This is not how we normally do this, but... Ooh, that's a little bail. Hmm. Anyway, this way we get three at a time instead of one at a time with the skid loader. Dalton fills up my bucket with, or puts two bales in my bucket, and then he grabs one. Pretty deep snow, so it's hard to get up to the bale. But he grabs one, and I follow him back, and then he takes them out of the bucket. I could dump them, but sometimes that kind of caves them in. I'll get out of here, I guess. negative five today the bedding for the cattle really isn't that bad but it's uh we got them all kicked out of the pen anyway here to sort sort some pregnant ones out that need to go back up to the dairy before they calve so we have to do that today so that for that reason the cattle are already kicked out which makes it really easy to bed them so that's what we're gonna do about 20, 22 miles an hour and wide open going so he takes off for me pretty quick but I can catch him it's a little down there that's the pen right there that we need to bed right there but in the back there it's, it's still pretty good but needs to be done so I'll get her done that's all we needed two trips six bales otherwise it's six trips with a skid loader just for size reference of this the size of this payloader that's the straight trucks that we use to haul grain that Emily dumps and that shows you how much taller we sit that's a pretty big payload. I had no reason to be at the farm today, but Avery was battling it out in the cold today. But we had to stop here quickly anyway because we have to meet somebody. We have to meet somebody. So Avery is going to give us an update on the Hopper Bottom project and then tell us a little bit about his day that he didn't film because it was too freaking cold. All right, we got the. The new hopper, I don't know where the old one went, but we got the new one riveted up under there. Uh, borrowed Tim Dappy's rivet gun, or whatever you want to call that thing. Uh, it does like really big rivets. This is what it is. That one got bent and broke, but 
riveted up in place. It was a real pain to get lined up because there's some rubber things that go in between the, the hopper and the door. So I had to get all them lined up. It was a project. That's why you got to be careful with them doors so they don't get bent because we had like 20 man hours and cutting the old one off and putting this one on and we're not even done yet. We got to put the door back in it that's laying on the ground over there. But yeah. Sounds like we should bail the person who left it open. Yeah. <laughs> what about your cattle sorting day? <laughs> I had to walk up the snow, snowy hill like twice. You were you were sorting pregnant heifers to go back to the dairy, right? Yeah, we have we have pregnant ones that uh, are about calving about two weeks, so I had to sort them out. Send they're them all, back. They're all in the same pen. All the pregnant ones are in the same pen, no matter how pregnant they are basically so we we get a list usually about 15 of them have to go back every two weeks so we get them all in the headlocks we have to run two groups through so we break we don't have enough headlocks for all of them in one pen so we have to bring a group in let them lock up kick the rest loose ones out and then go down the headlocks and see which ones mark the ones that need to go back then we kick them out individually, put them in a different pen, and kick them all out, rotate them to a different pen, then bring the other half back in. And that's why I had to walk up the hill twice because there's always like 30 that don't want to come in because they know what, I don't know, they're just miserable animals. So <laughs> I have to go push them in and then they all lock up. And then there's probably like 20 that don't lock up. So you got to sort them, call it manually. It's a two hour project, no matter what you do. If you try and go fast, it's a four hour project. So if you take your time, it's a two hour project. So. Because the cattle handling and we like to be good and use their um, behavior in our benefit instead of just scaring them, right? Yeah, and Greg. Greg, Greg is not. Well, Greggy, <laughs> Greggy knows exactly what we, sh we should do. But I think he doesn't even have to help. Like, if he just stands there and watches, it just goes like crap. <laughs> so he's better off to just stay in here and let Dalton and Mason and Roland and I handle it. And actually, Dalton and I can do a pretty good job, too. The only thing you need extra help for is getting them off the hill. But then when you've got the guys there, it's easier just to run the two guys down running gates, kicking them one way or the other to sort them out. So. We'll film the we'll, process. Film that. Yeah, we can film that sometime when it's not. Negative. negative five out <laughs> when I can have my hands out of my gloves. Yeah, so it's not a it's not a hard job. It's not bad. It's a, it just becomes a lot of walking. It's just time consuming. Yeah, it's just time consuming, and it's. I wish we could do it once a month and just take five loads back. Because what we do is we'll sort them today and then we'll take them back tomorrow. So. And that's all because we don't want them to have calves here because we are not the dairy farm. We just do the raising of it, yeah. and. If they, especially if they're to have calves here, because we just don't have the facilities to like keep right. the babies warm and the mama's milked right now. That away. happens once in a while, but you don't want it. So then you're chasing a calf on that side of the hill, and that is not fun. So thanks for watching. We'll keep you updated as the rest of this week is a cold, chilly one. But that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>